Welcome to the Quantum Conversations podcast. My name is Sarah Kleiner. Today, my co-host Carrie Bennett and I are going to be talking to you about these complex topics in quantum physics and circadian biology on an everyday person level. And that's really the goal of this podcast is to bring these topics, which have been extremely transformative to Carrie and I in our own personal health journeys and our family's health journeys, as well as hundreds of clients over the last few years that have been applying this information. So Carrie and I have created this podcast to really take these more complex topics and make them understandable to the everyday person. We're so excited that you're here. If you do enjoy the show, please make sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment if you're on YouTube. And if you're on the audio only podcast, give a moment to leave us a review over on Apple or Spotify, and it will help to get the show out to more people. If you have a moment to share the conversation with a friend or family member in a Facebook group, Instagram, post or just via text, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And we really want to thank you for being here. Before we jump into today's show, I wanted to let you know that Carrie and I have several free resources, which you can find down in the show notes, as well as courses where we teach people about these topics and how to apply them to your everyday life. So if you enjoy our conversations and you want to learn more, make sure you head down to the show notes to check out my resources, Carrie's resources, my courses and Carrie's courses. We also co-teach a course called Quantum Fertility, which helps women who have tried everything to improve their fertility and to get pregnant. We've had several women over the age of 40 who have had multiple other failed fertility treatments to have success after doing our program. So check that out below as well. And the last thing I want to let you know about is that Carrie and I are hosting a health transformation summit in January, January the 25th through the 31st. We have several speakers that we've handpicked that we believe are going to help you transform your health in 2024. There will be a link in the show notes for you to sign up all the topics, all the speakers, they will be free. And if you decide you want to have the recordings have lifetime access, you will also get a package of gift courses to come with the summit. So we are so excited to share this health transformation summit with you so that you can go ahead and really transform your health in 2024. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We are so glad to have you here and let's jump into the conversation. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Quantum Conversations. Now, we did talk last week about the topic of melanin, and we're going to talk about that um, in the future. But Carrie and I got to talking, and this episode is going to air in the beginning of January. We thought, let's like talk about some New Year's resolutions, right? Yeah, totally. You know, I think we've all been there. And I, you know, mm-hmm. you and I, I think having started our careers in oh, the gosh. fitness industry. <laughs> yes. January right. is like a January. bleep show. <laughs> right. Like the gym is packed for yep. three weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, why, why don't these resolutions stick? Or what would yeah. we what would we view with as resolution support? What we what we know about how quantum health and circadian health has changed us. Like, what would maybe our resolutions be? Um, yeah, or we just start over. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and I just kind of want to talk, touch on that because it's it really is a big industry in terms of like, um, I don't know, capturing people's attention and, and a moment of weakness, right? After the holiday binging, maybe, or yeah. guilt yeah. And, sh- and people's own guilt and shame as a result. It's like, you know, okay, let's capitalize on it. And if it, that's totally what it's become. And so let's- oh, maybe- yeah. Let's dive into it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think like the biggest thing for me, because my history is somebody who really just struggled with my weight and feeling uncomfortable in my own skin for most of my life, honestly. Um, you know, when I became a yoga teacher and got into yoga and kind of this understanding energy and that sort of thing, I stopped struggling as much with my weight because I would be like a hundred pounds overweight. So I mean, I had like severe issues with overeating, binging, like just a lot of eating disorder behavior. And then I got, you know, after my daughter, I got into yoga and meditation, all that. And it helped to quiet some of that, but it would still like, I would still fall into these like depressive episodes. Right. And so I was still like play around with like 30 pounds, (laughs) wasn't a hundred pounds, but it was still like 30 pounds. I think a lot of people do that, um, you know, every day, maybe 10 or 15 pounds or up to 30, sometimes more. But what's really been helpful for me, um, 
that's been sustainable is this kind of quantum circadian way of living. Um, and I think that if I had to start over again and, you know, talk to myself 15 years ago, I would say, start with morning light, start with really, really sinking your light, dark, dark cycles, supporting your neurotransmitters with that morning sunlight. And like all this other stuff is going to be so much easier. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I, I'd be the same way, you know, having done, I, I, I didn't really struggle with my weight necessarily, but I, I just out of my own self exploration, self exploration, pretty much tried everything out there, right? Like people yeah. be in my communities and be like, have you heard of this? I'll be like, oh yeah, I tried that. Oh, yeah, I tried that. Right? Like, just because I'm, I'm curious, I'm a curious human being. And so like having gone through P90X and having oh, gone yeah. through like these 21 day detoxes and things yeah. like that, right? You know, the, the um, master cleanse. Did you ever do that one? I, of course. That was during massage therapy school, right? <laughs> <laughs> did that one a few times <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 I mean I, at the time I was like how is drinking sugar sugar all day like <laughs> helping me cleanse it like think what? about it you're like wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> I know I know I still do every once in a while get a craving for the combination of lemon and cayenne pepper. yes like, I, I do too it's very nice especially if you have like have sinus congestion yeah, that warmth, exactly. to, yeah clear something out yeah absolutely but I have no maple syrup. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one didn't really sit well with me. Um, I, I, yeah, I did. I, I don't know. I won't even go into all that random stuff I did. I, I was on a cleanse one time um, and I tried to play pickup basketball. I was like, what oh, are gosh. you doing? Right. What yeah. are you doing? I was like, guys, got to go. <laughs> I'm going to pass out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. Me in my before I got pregnant with my daughter in my late 20s, I think I was doing that master cleanse and I went out with everyone who was, they were all out drinking until like four in the morning. And I was like the sober person out with everybody on the master cleanse. Like, okay, that's brilliant. Like, let's go into a bunch of smoky bars while you're anyway. Right. Right. Drop it, drive everyone through the Taco Bell drive. through Brilliant. The way home, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. Let's, they did. They went to like the cafe diner and they were ordering all this food at like four in the morning. And I was just like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> But, you know, I mean, needless to say, um, we've, we've ex experimented with and explored a lot. And I still think it's a, a New Year's is a great time to kind of sit back and reflect. Yes. And think yeah. And, yeah. and kind of maybe even manifest and start shifting those energies. So I really love that about this time of year. Yeah. But I think both of us can agree that it's not about the one, you know, the uh, magic pill, the magic pill, the magic workout series, the diet, the, 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 detox. Diet, the detox, right? Yeah. It's about these little the lifestyle changes that are made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I really encourage people to experiment with two different ideas. Number one, it's all about consistency. Yep. And that's over perfection, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, you know, even when I have the best of intentions to say, yeah, you know what? I really feel like I want to do a dry fast, you know, mm -hmm. the next 24 hours. And then all of a sudden life appears and I have to say, okay, got to cut this off at the 16 hour mark. It's not a failure, right? Right. You know, it's like, so it's about like, what is this? What are the little consistent habits we do on a, on a regular basis to kind of move us in the correct direction or in the direction that yep. we feel like our body is thriving more and more. Yep. So consistency over perfection for sure. Um, and then the other one is change small things. Yes. Yes. Right? As opposed to like that big old you know, change, go, right? Like, like going to I'm the gym every morning for right, 5 a.m. Yeah, yep. Right. And then I'm, yeah, that's what I used to do is go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning. Cause that, yeah. Cause you want to get it, you want to knock it out. And I know a lot of women that do that because they have kids, they have jobs and it's like 5 a.m. is the only time I can get into the gym and do the workout and do this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you're, you're complaining to me that you're inflamed, you can't lose weight and you have all these hormonal issues. And so perhaps this way of doing things is causing you more harm than good. I know you want to, and it's, it's good to work out. It's good to move your body, but we have to say something about stress and how, what that can actually do to your inflammation levels and your cortisol levels. And we're not meant to be in like full force warrior mode at five in the morning, especially in the dead of winter, we should be sleeping or if we're awake like restorative reflecting like you were saying doing some manifesting some meditating and 
I do a lot of that. You know, when I, if I wake up and it's early, I just, I will pray a lot. I'll breath meditate, work. breath work. Yep. I do a lot of alternate nostril breathing, which is like so super simple. Um, so mm-hmm. what I, I did teach yoga for 13 years, so I <laughs> A couple breathing techniques, but that's just the one I always go back to because it just really evens things out. Brings I do that in the parking down. lot, waiting for do the kids. Like, and like I'm like, people are like, people are probably like, what is that what lady doing? <laughs> <laughs> With the sunroof open and it. snow coming into my oh, car. Oh, I love it. I like love this, it. Right? <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a perfect time for those of you who don't take advantage of uh, pickup time in the parking lot, right? For waiting for the kids as self care. Like, it's oh, a yeah. Perfect time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think that um, having owned a gym and um, being under the assumption that a hardcore workout was the best thing someone yep. could do for their body, regardless of the time, regardless of what, how one slept the night before, regardless yep. of the stress levels, regardless of one's hormone balances, yes. right? Like, um, I, I know that that's a failing plan, right? You know, mm-hmm. while I do love exercise, don't get me wrong. I love sweating and challenging my body. I do that now to that capacity three or four times a month maybe yeah. right like and then I allow my body I allow my body to take advantage of the opportunity to heal from heal that, and rest right? yep. heal exactly. and rest exactly yeah exactly. yep. um I, you know the, the fitness industry is it's they're, they're they make a lot of progress and there's a lot of things but I still think that everything about the fitness industry too is we're overdoing it. Mm-hmm. We're, oh, it's Big too time. much. It's too Big time. much yeah it is way too much it's way too much and that's one thing for me like I have never been able to keep my weight stable. Like it's always been, like I mentioned, this like 30 pounds up and down since I found kind of the quantum and circadian lifestyle and kind of all the stuff I talk about in my 21 day program, which is not a diet. It's not Mm -hmm. a food. It's an introduction into a lifestyle. It's an introduction into a lifestyle that you're supposed to maintain throughout, you know, and I did that before pregnancy to help me get pregnant. I did it during pregnancy to help me have a healthy pregnancy and then postpartum. And it should just flow through your life like that. You should have these basic things that you do. And I didn't have these, I haven't had these huge weight swings um, like I've historically dealt with. And everyone's like, oh, your 40s, it's so hard to lose weight. I'll be 45 in six months, um, le- you know, less than that now. And I'm like, I'm still kind of like, I'm not waiting. Trust me. I'm not asking for it. Don't, you know, but I feel like things are more manageable now in my mid forties than they were in my mid thirties. And I don't think that's by accident at all. Um, no, I agree. I agree completely. Right. I'm going to be 43 this, you know, six months and um, it, absolutely in a busier life you know, more, more family stuff, right. Three, three kids, three kids a right. Booming a, a, business. A business, right. Yep. All, um, and wanting to be involved and, in, you know, coaching basketball, I mean, all these yep. things, right. That, and I do, I feel like life in terms of taking care of my body is simpler yes. than ever before. Don't need a 20 step routine and no. like a super strict diet and to go on these juice cleanses and fasts and things like that. Like if you want to do a water fast or like you like a dry fast, things like that, if you've built up to it, watch our built up to it, yeah. you have to get fat adapted and get your body mm-hmm. healthy enough to do those things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't find that I need to do all this flushing and cleansing and dieting and all the stuff I used to do. Supplements, handfuls the su- of oh, supplements. Oh, the handfuls of supplements. Right, handfuls yeah. of supplements. Three times a day, handfuls yep. of supplements. And yep. yeah, like I I really feel like, um, it, you know, if someone is listening to this and they're starting fresh on this quantum and circadian lifestyle, um, my go-to is just consistently get morning light. Yes. Right go the bit no matter what tell you, no matter what and even if it's not perfect or even if right. you've got crazy see crazy I don't want to say it's crazy but extreme more extreme seasonal variations in terms yep. of when the day starts or so, then still just go outside and get morning light and if you yep. can tie that to a walk yep that's amazing right yep. or some form of movement outside like in the nice in the warmer months it could look maybe like some yoga some pilates yep. I'm going to join this Tai Chi group because on my walk 
every sing, every time I get to take what I call my long loop, I am um, I see this group of people at the park. There, I think they're all. I, I think I would be younger than them by about thirty years. Um, and I see this group of maybe a handful of people at the park, and they're doing tai chi outside in it. natural light. Now they're not. I actually it, have right? a similar group in my neighborhood too, and it's about the same. It's usually only like two people though. I think that. <laughs> I, it's my that's there that's my new year's resolution i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to love the, it. The, the tai chi group <laughs> talk to the tai chi group. <laughs> yeah but right you know like i think um i, I think if we can th- think about t- taking care of our physical body and mm-hmm. our muscles mm-hmm. as movement first there yeah. is such thing as an active couch potato i don't know have you ever have you seen that research before no, i haven't it, i mean i read an art this is probably an article gosh you know over over five years old now uh, a few articles about how people kind of made this assumption that a hardcore one hour workout at the gym oh yeah and then they just sit the rest of the day and then they sit there yeah they're sedentary yeah. and that yeah. there's actually no benefit to no. it mm-hmm. they've lost the benefit mm-hmm. of the workout by doing yeah. that so yeah. that was a, that was a huge thing for me to to kind of wrap my brain around. It's like and starting to coach my clients up at the time. It was mostly personal training and nutrition clients, but to coach my clients up on like, hey, movement matters, right? Yeah, 100%. you know. And yeah. while I do love the fact that you're strengthening your muscles and you're staying strong and you're uh, you are recognize that posture is important and we want to make sure you know uh, all the things, right? Can you move all your joints in a full range of motion? Right. Like there's there's some essentials there that that's but like movement alone really mm-hmm. matters. And so mm-hmm. increasing walks for me or or not even increasing walks, honoring walking yeah as important. Yeah. You know, I I used to think if it wasn't, you know, um uh, what, what was Billy Blank's Tybo? If it wasn't like Tybo was or Stepper, I had all the I videos. I, I I was a Zumba instructor. Like, <laughs> I love I it. Still laughs at that. He's like, "You're teaching Zumba." I'm like, I'm teaching Zumba. Um, so like, yeah. I I used to think if it wasn't that intensity, mm-hmm. that it wasn't worthwhile, right? And so yeah. walking for me was the biggest game changer. And um, because we typically walk outside, like I encourage outside yes. walking when it's safe, you know, yes. obviously assess your safety situation, but walking outside when it's, when it's safe and in the natural light, mm-hmm. that just, I feel like is two beautiful things. Oh that yeah. Here together. Great. And then when I add in the combination, I'll divide my walk up, right. I will, um, spend some of the time walking, listening to a podcast because I get a lot of um, you know, joy out of that. Yeah. But then I'll also force myself to stop and I have to Quiet. force myself to, and I'll just walk. And it's almost like I call it a movement meditation because mm-hmm. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm not really focusing on anything, mm-hmm. but that's where my brain just gets, it just stuff comes, you know, yep. and it could just yep. be an idea or a thought or a, you know, a, a you know, a, something that I need to mention to a client or something yes. like and it's it's such a special time. I highly yeah. encourage people to maybe make something like that a walking walking outside as part of their um, way to kind of start to support this circadian and quantum lifestyle um, yeah. in, in a really profound but simple way. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think that's it's so simple yet it's so impactful. And again, it it helps with so many things. Like you're getting all of that natural light, which we need our neurotransmitters, our body needs it to get all that infrared for healing, for cell regeneration, to make that subcellular melatonin. Um, so many great things happen when we're outside in natural light that people, you know, we know, I think people know it's good to go outside, but they don't really understand like why it's so good. There's like a whole bunch of science that we both talk about in all of our courses and things like that so important for your body to get those signals and also get that those, those electrons um we need that you know and, and i think people know that but they've just been taught like they have to if they're not sweating and like a suffering <laughs> of death on the floor then they haven't done anything like that's how it was with yoga for years like it had to be um, Bikram yoga, it had mm-hmm. to be 105 degrees and 90 minutes and, or super I, challenging poses, right? If yeah. I didn't feel like I was going to die at least once during the class, then I really didn't do anything that day. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. no, you, yeah. If, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, and that's not sustainable. And eventually that did backfire on me. You know, Same. eventually I did start having all this inflammation and discomfort and hormonal issues because mm-hmm. I had to stay in this constant state of 
more harder, faster, more extreme. Adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Constantly. And you Mm -hmm. see that a lot as an instructor too. You see, you know, and as any, any time that you're putting yourself out there, whether it's podcasting or, or being a fitness instructor, you'll have like versions of yourself that will come to your class. Like you kind of mm-hmm. attract people that are similar to you. So even when I was teaching yoga, I would always have people that would come in and try to force themselves into these poses that their body wasn't ready for. They would end up getting injured. They would try to do like extra chaturangas, like extra put, you know, I'm like, why are you doing like six chaturangas when I just said one? Or if I just, you know, said like knees, chest, chin, like something simple, people always have to dial it up. And it's like, the body just doesn't work that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, totally, totally. And so I feel like um, if you're thinking about stepping foot into into a gym, you know, maybe if you haven't been doing that lately, ask yourself, why, what, like, what are you trying to get from it? Like, Mm -hmm. what is Mm -hmm. your goal? And if you think, and if that goal is tied to weight loss, or if that goal is tied to fit, like, you know, a fitter body or anything along those Mm -hmm. lines, like, just like, like, just remind yourself that you might, what we're taught by the fitness industry is not the complete picture of what Mm -hmm. it means to be fit and healthy and of healthy weight, Right. Right. What, what we feel our healthy weight is whatever that might look like. So, um, so yeah, I'm not, I, I, that, that, I mean, that, that's there. The, something else that I wish I would have prioritized and known well before I embarked on any form of, um, exercise, like, you know, new year's exercise or diet regimen was breathing normal or how we quote unquote should be breathing. Yeah. I was a freaking mouth breather all the time. No one ever said a dang thing. No. Um, no one. Right. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know. Um, and so like, I really highly encourage people to kind of explore and learn more about breathing and yeah. how to train breathing. And I'm not talking about, you know, Wim Hof style breathing. I'm not right, even talking no. about, um, you know, like extended breath holds. Right. I'm just, I'm right. talking about like, work with someone or interact with someone or learn from someone who can teach you the mechanics of just breathing naturally all yes. the time. Yes. You know, especially when we're sleeping as well. That's a key time. Um, our capacity with our mitochondria is pretty much dictated by how well we breathe at night. And so yeah. if you're not breathing well at night, your mitochondria aren't burning fat for you. If you're not breathing well at night, your body, your mitochondria aren't able to push as hard during exercise, right? So I really encourage you to uh, to look into that and some good resources there. I love Sachin Patel. He is mm-hmm. such, so good with breath. So I encourage that. I encourage um, AJ, who is uh, AJ DeMello. He's spirals and waves on Instagram. He is, um, he's is he got some really amazing connections between breath and posture and movement. Mm. He's great. I really also like the work of James Nestor. Oh yeah, definitely. Breath, right. It's mm-hmm. a great book. If you want to be, if you want to, you know, nerd out a little bit and then also Patrick McEwen and his, uh, oh, yeah. his oxygen advantage breathing all I'm, I'm certain I'm leaving people out. So I'm sorry if I, if I haven't mentioned you, but, um, that for me was a huge, huge fundamental shift that once I made that shift, I learned how to breathe. I learned where to position my tongue. I learned how to keep my mouth closed both day and night, unless I was doing extreme physical exertion. Mm -hmm. Um, That shifted, that shifted my needle of health so drastically, so drastically. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like beyond any detox I've ever done. (laughs) Agree. Agree. And we're not like anti-detox. Like I put up a post the other day that I upset a lot of people. Cause I basically, <laughs> you do this all the time. <laughs> I do. I, sh- I, you know, I'm like, I didn't mean to, but I kind of like, I do like to just make people think a little bit deeper Yeah, sure. because there's so much junk out there now that it's like, Oh, if you just do this detox, then that's going to help your body start losing weight. And there might be a little bit of truth to that. However, if you're not doing the fundamental stuff, if you're not breathing, if you don't have the the right day and night light and dark signals for your body. If you don't have all those things. Yeah. If your leptin is a a mess and you're going in and doing this detox, you're going to stress your body out way too much. You may see negative returns. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, just, I got a lot of people that were like detoxing is 
everyone should do detoxing. I'm like, well, but detox has a place. Yeah, exactly. But it's not at the top. It's of the not funnel. at the top of the fun. <laughs> exactly. It's not number one. It's like number like ten. Right. That you've got to get the foundations down, or you're going to make yourself not feel so good. Because I've done that before. I don't know about you, but <laughs> talking oh, yeah. about all these like detoxes, cleanses. Right. I've made myself horribly sick before. Yeah. Um, herks, you herks the heck out of your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm like, oh, I've, I've even done that with castor oil packs because mm. they felt so good that I overdid the castor oil packs and ended up giving myself migraine headaches. Wow. <laughs> and be, yeah. Because my body was trying to get rid of too much too fast. I made an electrolyte imbalance and it was just like, psh, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I always have to do everything and like learn the hard way. <laughs> Well, I mean, that way you can teach people, right? So right. <laughs> those people all come to my membership group and like, I, it's so hard because if you mention something like, oh, you could try a castor oil pack, then you get the person that's like me. It's like, oh, I'll just do that every day. And then. Ah, that's a great other thing for a new year's resolution, right? Like, yeah. you know, I'm all about what is the minimum effective, effective dose. dose. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. And so I, I have found the minimum effective dose of, of exercise, like strength training for me. I found the minimum effective dose of morning light and morning yeah. walks, right? Because while, while more light is great, right? It, it is, but it is good to know what's enough, right? What's yeah. enough. You yeah. know, I know I know what I need to do in terms of fasting. If I choose to fast, mm-hmm. I know what Same. I need to do in terms of sauna. If I want a yeah. sauna, um, and yeah, and w- while while um, it, or even like even like occasionally supplementing stuff. You know, I never. I think I drive my my membership group crazy because I never tell people to stay on something indefinitely. No, same. I tell you to cycle, cycle, yeah. cycle, cycle. Right. Yeah. Because um, because. Uh, you know, iodine for this amount of time for you might make you feel good, but all of a sudden it tips you over the threshold, right? You know, and so, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I encourage people to really ask themselves, okay, what are the little, like, what's the minimum, how bad does that sound for New Year's, but what's the minimum you can do to to start to feel better, feel better, feel different. Yeah. And with morning light, that's a tough one because, you know, if you do have a lot of circadian dysfunction, the more that you can do is the better, right? Because I get, I know you get the question all the time. What's the minimum amount of morning sunlight that I can get for a benefit? I'm like, just do what you can, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. if you can do more, do more. If you can't, then you know, try it out for a while, see if it helps. And if it's if if you're not getting to where you want to go, try to do a little bit more if you can. Um, right. Yeah. Stay consistent though. It's like just that's the consistency the thing, over right? like every day x amount of time you know you're good and you miss three days out of mm-hmm. seven yeah i'd rather you go out every day for seven days and have a At couple of days where two you're minutes, right? yeah Whatever. if you're only getting a cut co- like two minutes a couple of those Sunrise, days yeah. it's better than getting zero you totally. know and that's the all or nothing mentality is so damaging. Um, oh, that- that's another one with New Year's resolutions for sure. All or nothing. And that comes with exercise. It's why yep. people stop exercising. It's why people yep. stop a quote unquote diet, right? Yep. It's because, you know, they oh, messed up and they have to start up. all over yeah. again. No, you like, don't, no. you don't have to start all over again. No, no, no. Pick back up. Right. Pick it back up. Right. Whether, and, just- whether, and that, that goes for like you, you ate a, a garbage cookie. breakfast, right? right? Let's say you just thought you uh, you ate donuts at the office for breakfast. The rest of the day is not ruined. That's, it, that's yeah. It's your mental. It's your you have to change your mental uh, attitude about that stuff because that's how I used to be. Like mm-hmm. it, when I did work in an office, if I had donuts in the office because they would always have freaking donuts, and I would mm-hmm. like you know you're trapped in there and you're like thinking about it and you're like I want one and then uh, and then you give in and then you have like five of them and then you're and then like you say screw it my day is ruined like, I'm just hmm, gonna eat a what am I gonna have for, for dinner, dinner <laughs> right and you like ruin it you have this awful dinner but I don't do that anymore like if I want to have like a sugar cookie or something which I don't often do but if I'm like really craving something I'll have it have one of it and then like keep going the rest of the day, like have a healthy dinner. Or if I even, I'm like not hungry. Cause that's the other thing. If I ate five donuts, do I really need to eat a big dinner? No, much less like a burger and fries and a shake and all that crap. Um, sometimes if I do that, I'll just fast through dinner. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I just, you know, I don't need to eat anything. I'm at enough today. I'm, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so, or like just a handful of macadamia nuts that are really salty to just kind of stabilize my blood sugar. If I've like taken it on this like nasty swing from mm-hmm. eating something bad, sure. it's just this mentality of like, oh, I screwed up. So now I have to go and just completely lose my mind. I think people have to get rid of that too, because the food's going to be there. And that's like what I've had to train myself on. And it's a lot easier now that I have the neurotransmitter support. And then I have these light and dark sequel, like cycles synced up for myself. I don't have to have this conversation all the time, Mm -hmm. but I used to have to have the conversation like food's not going anywhere. (laughs) It's still going to be available. Like, yeah, yeah. you can have it if you really want it like another day, but like today maybe just isn't the right day for that. That's the exact strategy I use to kind of coach out that type of eating habit. Cause I, we such parallels. I, my gym was next to a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> we shared a bit, like we shared a common hallway, right? Like I oh, didn't, wow. I couldn't even, didn't even have to go outside. And so every, every break, it was like, oh, those are calling me, right? Those, th- those you probably could smell them. Me. Oh, totally. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and so, so I started to say, just delay it. Don't deny it, yeah, you know? Yeah. Right. You know, and if I want I really it, want like, to have it tomorrow, exactly. If I really want to have it tomorrow or if, you know, and I was, I'm going to say 99 times out of a hundred, if I even delay, if, if I even just kind of let the thought go for 45 minutes to an hour at the thought of it again, it was just kind of like, Ew. Yeah. and then if I, yeah. and then if I have the thought and, was, and then, you know, at some point it sounded it was like, okay, you know, I'll go ahead and have that, you know, but um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that was a, that was a key strategy that I use. I would say that if people are looking for consistent advice in terms of working on weight management, right? We've mm-hmm. talked about this, but I kind of, let's maybe, I'll give my hierarchy. Do you want to give your, like, like, or yeah, my, yeah. okay. I, so I always tell people, I'd rather you focus number one on when you're eating. Yes. Right. Yes. So That's step number one. Are you eating from about sunrise, give or take an hour-ish, right? Don't get Mm -hmm. too rigid there. Sunrise to about six to eight hours later. Mm -hmm. Longer maybe in the summer months, but Mm -hmm. in the winter months, it's typically shorter, right? Yep. When and then after eating within that window of time, that that gives your body just that alone. Mm-hmm. gives your body the beauty of going to bed on an, on a stomach that's not digesting a bunch of food, yep. right? If you do need a little something at night because you're dealing with blood sugar imbalances, have a little bit of fat. Yeah, It's therapeutic, like a little yep. bit of ghee or something. It's not going to yep. taste good, but it'll satiate you. Um, and so basically you've got this, this window of time that gives your body extra time for healing and repair, mm-hmm. extra time to coach itself how to burn fat as a fuel source, mm-hmm. right? Especially while you sleep, which it's designed to do. So I say, this is your window. Then in that window, can you eat distinct meals yep. and not graze all day? Yeah. Because as you have spoken to, I know, and know, obviously that's key for leptin in terms yep. of leptin being able to stay 100%. strong, right? And so if you can do those two things, basically earlier fueling window, six to eight hours, you know, more, more if you need to 10 hours, like don't, don't stress yourself, but early fueling window, eat distinct meals, which would probably look like two or three distinct meals. Then at that point, I say, and you get a morning walk, right? Yeah. Like right in there. So maybe eat and then go on a morning walk. There's so many key benefits that we talk mm-hmm. about from the circadian rhythm to the, the glucose management, the yeah. insulin management, the, um, the, what was I th- saying with the, that, the, uh, the, the brain chemistry signaling that you get with it. Yeah. So morning walk, then I finally talk to people about what they're eating, but I don't touch what until all of those things are, are in, place, in place because I think that they I think they trump it right like I think that yep. they matter a lot yep I think so too I mean as long as you're not eating like a donut well right Do, uh, exactly I mean and, it, and if you are if you are eating a donut right like still get those things in place yeah. And then definitely you do then you're going to switch, switch the breakfast. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then, then that's how I change the, the meals, right? Mm-hmm. Breakfast first, mm-hmm. start your day off with what we would call a, a, a breakfast that coaches your body to burn fat, right? A yes. leptin sensitizing breakfast. Yeah. Mind you, if your leptin is low, Mm-hmm. This isn't necessarily you, right? If your right. leptin is low, it means your body, it kind of thinks it's in starvation mode, right? So you have a little bit more wiggle room, but the majority of people leptin is high. Yep. And, um, and so that would mean then having a really satiating breakfast of mm-hmm. protein and fat 
I tell people they could also add like the the very low carb vegetables for bulk, mm-hmm. right? Bulk yep. and there's and Fiber, those things can yeah. really yeah, those things can really mushrooms are great. Cabbage is like like little bits of cabbage, oh, yeah. shredded cabbage, like a cup of shredded shredded cabbage goes a long oh, way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I agree with that entirely. And you know, I the thing that people do a lot <laughs> that is like the biggest mistake I think people make is they try to make these diet changes, extreme diet changes too quickly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this will be coming out in January. So this course is no longer available, but I was doing, and I'm still putting it out now. I did a 10 day leptin sensitive for the holidays course, which is not like an intensive course, like my 21 day but it gives you some guidelines. And I've had a lot of people that are like, I started doing your, your 10 day course. And like, now I can't sleep. And I'm, I'm like, what'd you do to your diet? Because I never say, and I I say in the, in that course, I'm like, if you want more specifics on diet, you need to do the 21 day and get into my group. And we can kind of help coach you a little bit more with that. Um, so I don't give even really diet specifics in that course, but what people are doing time and time again, is they're taking their carbs down too low, too quickly, and that's disrupting their sleep. And, and if you're somebody that's eating a good amount of carbohydrate right now, and you want to go to a more lower, lower carbohydrate approach, because you are leptin resistant, you have really high leptin and you're like, I need to drop this down. And it does help to lower your carbs to do, to reverse leptin resistance. Um, that's a big mistake I see people making is they're like, oh, I just, I went, you know, totally keto in week one. Um, but they're like, but sunrise and wearing blue blockers is messing up my sleep. I'm like, no it's not, (laughs) it's, it's, you're, you're dropping this out way too fast. And so, you know, yes, if you've, if you've got this leptin issue, that's why I, in that 10 day course, didn't even really address the diet. People are just kind of assuming this. I'm like, let's do these basic things first. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because like you said, the morning light, the walk, the breakfast, you know, just the timing, I think like what time you eat is almost as important as like what you're eating. Um, because you're, you know, you're more, uh, leptin resistant at night or insulin resistant at night. Like your body is less able to tolerate food period. Um, and so getting your food in the beginning part of the day and getting those strong signals in the beginning part of the day is crucial for your energy mood, and just your weight being stable. And I think that that's what gets lost in these New Year's resolution um, plans. Everyone wants to do intermittent fasting and we do the coffee for breakfast and we skip and try to delay our eating as long as we can. And what we've done is we've just messed up, you know, there's all this, this hormonal stuff going on. And so it's much better to eat with the hormones and mm-hmm. and in that sort of a cycle than to try to to drop carbs out to nothing and wait to the middle of the day to eat and you know there yeah so I, I see that happening a lot yeah yeah totally totally I you know and this goes whether your new year's, new year's resolution has to do with metabolism or mm-hmm. a chronic dis- illness or j- illness journey you're on that you're trying to support your body through the body needs to know a couple of key things, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm certain I've said this previously. It needs to know the time of day. Mm-hmm. That's why you go outside exactly. in the morning. It needs to know where you are on this planet. And so that there's magnetic field lines, right? That the body can orient to that kind of, I think it get distorted by all the non-native magnetic fields oh, yeah. that are around us. And so, and so, you know, go outside and ground yourself. And when you ground yourself, not only are you kind of geolocating yourself, but you're also then calming your nervous system. Within seconds of grounding outside, you get a balancing of the sympathetic and parasympathetic mm-hmm. nervous system, right? To really say, oh, this is Carrie's state right now. Yeah. Um, oftentimes for too many people, default mode is in the body is that Carrie is under threat. You know, because of my my nervous system is seeing the flicker from the light bulbs. My nervous system, mm-hmm. my my brain is hearing the buzzing of the um the refrigerator or like yeah. things that we don't even consciously perceive that the nervous system can be picking up on as a threat. Oh yeah, let alone the things that we can perceive, right? Yeah. That. And so, and so there. So I say to to really set the stage. Then so I go outside. 
I gaze to get my sunrise eyes, right? To get set, tell the time I'm earth and grounded to tell my parasympathetic nervous system, all is copacetic to tell my body where it is in space. And then I go inside and I nourish myself and I tell mm -hmm. myself that food is available, right? Yes. That there, yes. that there are nutrients available to me. I don't have to all of a sudden get a surge in adrenaline to think that I need to find hunt, gather some, some form of nourishment. If, if you set that stage and I've done this many times, I've set that stage for myself time and time again, that is, that is the essential information the body mm -hmm. needs in order to say, okay, yeah, I, I can heal. I yes. can take some fat out of storage and start yep. to repair. I yep. can, um, I can kind of calm down the anxiety, calm down that, that, that stressed out, that heightened alert state yep. in order to take my body into that state where it is more capable of healing. So those are just foundational. So what, if, even if you do want to do the, you know, P90X or yeah. I, I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch TV very much these days. So I don't even know what, what's available, what information. Beach body or. Beach, oh my gosh, beach body. <laughs> yes still a lot of people doing that <laughs> is that still a thing oh, i think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay totally um and so even if even if like you want to do that because you feel like that's supportive for you yeah still lay this foundation yes right? these are so still huge so key right so key yep. but if you don't want to do that drop the guilt Right. Drop, drop the guilt to know right. that you could support your body in a foundational way that doesn't necessarily involve 90 minutes of exercise through 90 right. days straight. <laughs> I look better now than I did when I was doing the gym six, oh, same seven three days babies week. later, you know, right. after the belly I, was empty here, right. I just like, had a baby like 14 <laughs> months ago. My husband's like, you literally have visible abs. Like what yeah, are you doing? I'm, he's like, are you doing crunches? I'm like, I haven't no. actually like picked up a weight in you know, I know how to breathe pregnancy. Right? Yeah. I know how to breathe. Like I'm walking, I'm, I'm walking. Yeah. Do, yeah. But my body is like really tuned in to what's going on, what time of day it is, what time of year it is. Um, all of those things I'm getting grounding. I'm getting all, you know, the right signals I'm doing the red light therapy. I think that is actually super That's helpful. Yeah, I, love it. You know? I do love sauna too. I have a yep. bar infrared sauna. I, I do love, yep. um, this, just the whole breathing thing. When I, <laughs> I remember being in college that we, there was an infomercial about like breathing your way skinny. <laughs> It was. I, like I remember that one too. It was this lady with like this lioness, really blonde hair, yes. and she and and the. It was probably two or three in the morning, and we bought we as like me and my my uh, roommates we bought it, and it oh was the biggest joke. God. It was just like. <gasps> Like you have to make these funny She's faces. Doing the lion. Oh yeah, gosh. exactly. I feel like this guy um, on Instagram, his name is Mouth Breather. And he like has, if you can find him on Instagram, he hasn't been posting as much, but he used to just take all these like random videos from the nineties, like infomercials from the nineties and eighties and like turn them into the reels and like little short clips. And I think he had her. Oh, on... I can't, I want to find it and send it to my roommates because. Yeah, Mouth Breather is the name of the account. It's so funny. Our ads got stronger because literally as we were doing it, we were just laughing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, when I was doing, teaching a lot of yoga and I would teach a lot of pranayam and even going through advanced pranayam training, which is pranayam is like yogic breath my core would just get ridiculously sore when I would do these like five day long, like learning how to do these oh, advanced sure. breathing. I mean, my core would just be shredded because I'm like just doing all this different breathing and really getting into the diaphragm and <laughs> accessing those deep muscles that to, to, aren't accessed otherwise, you know, because we're just all trapped up in here all the time because we're on, you know, on high alert. Mm -hmm. so yeah totally yeah no it, it was that that I I want to find those send it my way tag me or like uh, DM me because I want to see that because I will. I, and then right after that infomercial was the knives right do you remember oh, the knives? God, yes. <laughs> we bought the knives too we're in a dorm room like we did nothing with knives but we were like oh those are so cool yeah. <laughs> oh my god it's amazing I no know, I know so anyways, yeah, I'm much healthy. I mean, I feel like I feel much better than even I was as an athlete, a college athlete, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's about like understanding the signals that the body needs, yes. right? What does the body need? Yep. You know, it doesn't necessarily need an intense detox or an intense mm -hmm. cleanse or mm -hmm. a really restrictive diet program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily need days in a row of working out, you know. Right. Um, right. 
but it does need some key things. And I'm really grateful, like you, you and I have been saying, to have found those key things for my body because life is easier. Yeah. What when you don't feel like you are um when you don't feel like you you're, you're on doing- this hamster wheel, like chasing, exactly. trying to it's figure a- out. And that's the people that come to me, is there and it's hard to get to pull them out of that space because they'll get in and they get the information, they start feeling better, yet they continue to listen to 15 different podcasts a day to give them health information. And it can be so frustrating because they're like, I'm doing this stuff and I feel better, but I just heard about XYZ supplement protocol and doing this and doing that. What do you think? And I'm like, it's like, fine, try it if you want to. But like, I don't think you really need to, (laughs) you know, I think you're just spinning your wheels. Like what is spurring you to want to do this extensive protocol? It's just that part of your brain that feels like if you're not constantly pushing yourself harder and like doing more then you're not getting better, you're not healing. And I think that's just what's what happens it especially in new year's time of year is that Certainly. this mentality is just rampant um and there's so ho- the, the, the whole the whole social media thing really it's it's a double edged sword because it yeah. brings you access it's brought me access to so many people Same. who i think Same. have a beautiful knowledge base but yep. then we do that i i see that so a lot much. right we get in the mindset of consume information consume information consume information but we never actually take the time to fully just apply, apply it and give it time give it time and give check in time. with our body and check in you know with our energy fields and yes. like just ask ourselves is this serving me is this nourishing me is this supporting yeah. me right it's it's yeah. really quickly if we don't notice something within I mean, two weeks max these days is what it oh, seems. Oh, people like. give up on it. It, it. We give up on it. Right, right. You know, and, and so. And the thing is like, when anyone comes to my group and says, I started doing sunrise and blue blockers and XYZ got worse. I'm always like, what else did you change? Because I have inherently, those things are not going to make anything worse for anyone. Or they could shift things, right? Meaning yeah. you want to go to bed earlier. So now you're yeah. waking up at 5 a.m. Yeah. after eight hours of sleep. And yeah. now you feel like that's pathological because you are used to sleeping in until eight or nine o'clock in the morning, right. right? There's that sort of a shift that has to happen as well, you know? Yeah. yeah. Especially in the winter, right? Like, oh, yeah. You know, good luck wearing blue blockers staying up past 8 30 in the winter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Exactly. That's not going to happen. But then, yeah, you're going to wake up at four. You might wake up at 4 30. And guess mm-hmm. what? You have to be okay then with, with telling yourself you had eight hours of restful sleep. Mm-hmm. You dreamed, right? Dreaming is a beautiful indication that you've ha- you had some really good healing done, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that you did while you were sleeping and then that you have to be 4 30 is an opportunity like maybe your alarm's not set till 6 30 that's two hours that yep. you can stay in bed yep. i i done like progressive relaxation i'll do like this central channel breathing right mm-hmm. where i'll well where i'll you know pull breath through my body it's it's just come prayer right i'll prayer. say i'll say a rosary i mean there's so yeah, many i i have all my little mantras mm-hmm. my um Exactly. I've already like said this one a hundred times, but if anyone needs to borrow it, I always use the Louise Hay phrase where she says, all is well, all is well. Everything is working out for my highest good out of this situation. Only the good will come and I am perfectly safe. And I will literally like, sometimes if I'm just like really stressed out, I'll just repeat that. And mm-hmm. a lot of times I'll fall back to sleep yeah. or I will just feel super relaxed and I can actually enjoy like being in my body and just just resting you know yeah. like yeah. that we've just lost the we we've taken away permission to do that number one because we mm-hmm. feel like we always have to be progressing and doing um and then we've lost the ability to even do that because we're always on the phone and you know numbing out with some sort of sensory input and so i mm. think that that's like a really valuable thing that people need to be doing more of you know yeah, it rest is key. It's yep. so key. And I'm still yep. guilty of it. My husband will say, you know, just, <laughs> just, well, he, his, he wants me just to lay on the couch and veg out and watch a TV show. And I just, I, that's not like, I can't do that. Like, idea of, like, right. Very rarely. Like there's a couple of shows that I can watch, but they've all 
I just, they're, I don't, they're not even out anymore. So it's I have a guilty pleasure that I'll watch every once in a while, but other than Same. that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe once a week I'll find. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I have that. Right. It's just like, you know, but in, in general, if I'm going to, if I have time just to rest and be, Mm-hmm. I, wanna, I actually want to sit like outside or even go mm-hmm. on a, just a really chill walk. Like to mm-hmm. me, that's, that's really, that is oh, relaxing yeah. for me. Cause it's a mental relaxing that I, re- mm-hmm. I need to take those mental breaks is what I need to do. Oh yeah. Um, I've learned how to balance my physical activity. So the mental breaks where I'm just walking in nature is just, Oh, that's amazing. my favorite. That's my favorite. And that was like one of the good things about having Sarah here for six weeks. So she forced me to get out to my mountain that I used, I used to go there every day, but I, things have been so crazy here that I haven't felt like I could do that. But we, you know, went to the mountain a few times and it was, I was like, oh yeah, this with no phones, you know, mm-hmm. just listening to nature and just being outside. You're like, oh okay. <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah. What I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. So. That's another one. I, um, I'm reading a book. Uh, this one's by, uh, basically a, da- a Taoist master named Montauk Chia, right? Um, one of them was inner smile. And this one is about the six healing sounds. Mm. And what he reiterates at each one is we, the human body was never designed to live in the environments we're living in now. Mm. Even a house like this, let alone the light, let alone the technology, it's such a foreign construct. From the way that the ether actually flows in in spaces like this to the non-native EMFs, Mm -hmm. to the artificial light signaling. I mean, all of it is foreign to our bodies. And we really only can get back into the natural habitat, natural state of our bodies in nature. Yeah. And so I really think that's underestimated as I well. So and I don't, I, do. I don't I'm guilty. I don't do it as much as I, I, yeah. I wish I could, but at least once a week, I try to surround myself in a space where I can't see anything but nature, trees, right? yeah. trees basically totally. yeah. trees and paths. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So that's another one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, don't underestimate that. Like, I feel like so much of this quantum and circadian stuff is just bringing Damn. our bodies yeah. back to where to they're supposed her. to be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, and it's not rhythms. like advanced biohacking where you need to like shoot yourself up with a bunch of peptides or whatever. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot more simple than that. You know, there was a, um, there's a, there was a women in bio or like a biohacking women in biohacking conference or something that Dave Asprey um, posted about at some point. And he said, tag, like there was, I mean, one wonderful women on there. I'm certain like really have learned a lot and have a lot that they mm-hmm. want to share. And Dave said, who am I missing? Tag someone. And so it's some, some lovely person tagged me below. And I thought to myself, I don't necessarily consider myself a biohacker, Same. right? Like I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not trying mm-hmm. to hack anything, anything. about my body. Same. Yeah. And I mean, I know that this person really meant, meant well, right. Because yeah. I, I, apparently they appreciate the knowledge that I share the, 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 all the stuff that I've learned that I get to share. Um, so that, that's totally cool. But like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't not need another device or another mm-hmm. supplement or, no. a tracker no. or, no. <laughs> and it's crazy. Like I, the more stress and stuff that kind of goes on in my life, the less I use a lot of devices mm-hmm. and the more my body just naturally seeks out grounding and sunlight and, you know, sitting by my fire, fire and looking do- at clouds. <laughs> yeah. Literally just doing the simple things. I don't want to go even like cold plunge. I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. I have equipment, but I don't really even feel like using it when my body is like kind of in this like stressed out state. So I think some of those things can be valuable, but yeah, there's something to be said for simplicity, you know? Simpl- simplicity, yeah. Um, if, I don't know if anyone knows Dr. Kathy Yeo, uh, Y-E-O, mm. right? She um, she has a really beautiful knowledge about the, the, the quantum and circadian stuff, really mixed with more of the traditional Chinese medicine aspect mm. of stuff. And one of the messages that I got in one of the courses that I took from her that was just so loud in such a good way was simplify 
Yes. It means, and that, that could mean like, that could mean like go into your closet and get rid of everything you haven't yes, worn. That you're not wearing. Six, right. Exactly. Over the course of the year, mm-hmm. it could mean, yeah, it, 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 it could mean look, go open your supplement cupboard and get rid of half of it. Right. At mm-hmm. least. Right. And mm-hmm. so I just think, I think simplify is such an underrated thing. We do it yeah. maybe more in the spring because we get this itch to, or just yeah. spring clean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But maybe that could be what I would encourage people to do this new year's as well. Like yeah. simple. Simplify, Simplify it, right? yeah. yeah. Get rid of, yeah, and get rid of the unnecessary activities, unnecessary emotional entanglements, yeah. unnecessary like obligations, things that you feel like you're supposed to be doing. Um, that's one thing that I've had to do in my life is just like, is that necessary? No, nope. not necessary, you know, and you mm-hmm. you learn how to do that. So I think that's the overarching message. And, um, we should have mentioned it earlier in the episode, but we're doing a health transformation summit. I'll try to maybe even record a little intro or something for this episode, but we're doing a health transformation summit. That's going to kind of encompass our favorite people and the things that we have found super helpful for health, um, Mm -hmm. in, you know, in our lives. So hopefully there'll be some nuggets to share there. Yeah. So that's so, uh, Sachin, who I alluded to earlier about the breathing, Mm -hmm. I interviewed him for the summit. Um, yeah. So Sarah and I found about, you know, 30 of our favorite people who speak, some of them speak to quantum circadian health, but some of them kind of, they, they bridge the gap. We've got, you know, homeopathy, we've got, um, I'm trying, I'm just, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, uh, herbalism. Um, mm-hmm. I interviewed uh, Amber, who I love her information on, and we talked about reading your tongue and like mm-hmm. getting in touch with your body and what your tongue is telling you. Um, and so things like that, where it's like, and the, the, again, we don't, this kind of does go with the simplify things because this summit that's coming up towards the end of January is, uh, was very much about practical and easy. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we ask each of these speakers, like what their view of health is, like, what do they think is important for health? But what are these small, practical things we can do Mm -hmm. to support it? And so it's not like we said, you're not going to get someone who says you've got to do a 30 day juice fast or Mm -hmm. right. Like we're getting we've got people who are telling you the small little things Mm -hmm. that you can look to. And even then. I get a summit, right? Summits can be, you have a lot, they can have a lot of information packed. And so the way that I tell clients these days to sort out, I just, I just had answered an email on that about this this morning. So it's popping into my brain. Um, but the way that I talk to clients about what to kind of hone in on is what resonates with you. Right. What That's are you so doing? Huge. To? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And then maybe learn a, a, one of the techniques that this person is teaching, start to apply it, see how you feel, go back to the summit material. Who else resonates with you? Right. What are they right. like? That's a really, really just yeah. kind of natural, organic way to start to engage with this information, and in a very simple, uh, mm-hmm. practical, and and just I don't know, non-stressful. Yes, a hundred percent. I think that's so so key. Is just <laughs> simplify and find what resonates with you. That's mm-hmm. that's totally. huge. Totally. Awesome. And we'll definitely put links in the show notes for anybody who wants to check out the summit. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about a new year. We'll talk about all kinds of interesting, fun topics. We'll definitely talk about melanin at some point. So make sure we you will, subscribe. but I kind of want, I kind of, yeah, so I kind of want to wait maybe even more towards the spring and summer when yeah. that we get the stronger UV light. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I yeah. like that idea. So cool. stay tuned. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks. Thanks.